This is just a guy who's been doing it for a long time, wanting to encourage you because that's kind of what a lot of folks want to do, right? They want to work for themselves. It really does not make sense to do that. You spend way too much time trying to talk to all the dealers for trade-ins and spend a lot of effort to, to find what they want. And then that person is not ready to make a decision and the tractor's gone and sold to somebody else. It's just, it's too much effort for too little reward. There's the 80-20 rule that, that is really applicable to just about every part of your life. I block people from my channel every single day. They're just a dime a dozen. They can wallow around in their filth elsewhere, but I'm not gonna allow that on my channel. I'm not gonna allow it to take me down. And so don't be afraid to change. That's kind of what this all comes down to. You know, some of you that follow along have noticed I've started selling tractors again, and uh, I wanna address why I am doing that, but also, just kind of give you the business side of it too and and for those of you that are either looking to get into a business or uh, you're in a business and you're looking for some reassurance on maybe how to take your business in a certain direction you know i want to be kind of something else that you can bounce it off of right and see this it's working for me maybe it'll work for you and what you're looking to do as well and i'm going back to my roots right now Started off this company actually buying and selling used tractors. I didn't sell attachments at all when I first started out. Uh, I actually just bought and sold them on on uh, Craigslist of all places. And I bought my first tractor not because I was going to sell it, but because I wanted a tractor and wanted a, a good deal and did my homework and ended up buying one and then uh, decided, you know what, I'm going to list it for sale and see if anybody wants to pay more than what I, I paid for it. And uh, I'll use it in the meantime and see how it goes. And and that worked and I did that again and then just kind of it kept snowballing from there. And so eventually as I was selling more and more tractors, folks were like, hey, I'd like to get a set of pallet forks or I'd like to get a tiller or whatever else along with the tractor. And so I started branching out and carrying some of those things. And then, you know, I, I think just naturally, since there's such a larger, wider pool of folks that already have a tractor and need attachments for it, that just started to kind of overtake the tractors where attachments became a bigger portion of the business and so then we all went through something you know the pandemic which was absolutely nuts and was a once in a lifetime type of event that just shifted everything and threw the used market out of whack completely because new inventory was impossible to get because factories were shut down and then huge backups and quarantines and everything it just delayed everything and so it drove used pricing through the roof as much as a brand new tractor, sometimes more than a brand new tractor because you just couldn't get equipment. So there was a major shortage, so it drove pricing up. So the stability of the pre-pandemic market was gone. And that meant that the pricing structure that I was familiar with and could tolerate that risk level because there's no blue book for tractors. And it's really a, a matter of knowledge, of industry knowledge to know how much I need to pay for a tractor, carry, all the overhead that goes along with it and then still make some profit and sell it for that disappeared because of the, the the crazy structure that was happening so that's why i got out of selling tractors uh for a certain period of time it wasn't because i didn't enjoy doing it it just was way too risky at that point and so since we're post pandemic now and the market has had a chance to stabilize again it made sense to jump back in and you know posting things on youtube and social media all the time you get you can drive yourself nuts listening to other people. This is absolutely crazy. And so, you know, folks in every, I block people from my channel every single day, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube or anything else. I have no time and no patience for negative people. I mean, it's, they're just a dime a dozen. They can wallow around in their filth elsewhere, but I'm not gonna allow that on my channel. I'm not gonna allow it to take me down to clog up viewers minds that are looking for good accurate information just with negativity folks we are proud to be sponsored by rimguard solutions a liquid ballast weight it goes right inside your tires completely hidden we're big on safety on this channel these tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory not only is it going to help with safety keeping those rear tires planted on the ground it helps with loader efficiency and traction too the benefits of rimguard include being the heaviest all-natural liquid ballast weight on the market it's not going to corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride it's not going to freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide find the dealer near you at rimguardsolutions.com and so for me to shift back into selling tractors is something that i enjoy doing it's a lot of fun and it's 
<laughs> even when I didn't, there were still folks that would reach out to me all the time and say, hey, you got any tractor for sale? Can you help me find this tractor? Whatever it is. And um, I, I used to, a long time ago, help. Well, if somebody wanted to find a specific tractor, I would seek it out. It really does not make sense to do that. You spend way too much tra time trying to talk to all the dealers for trade-ins and spend a lot of effort to, to find what they want. And then uh, that person is not ready to make a decision and the tractor's gone and sold to somebody else. It's just, it's too much effort for too little reward. And I'm really big on that. You gotta use your time wisely, very smartly. And doing it the way that I do now, which is primarily getting trade-ins from dealers where they send them to me. Sometimes I seek them out. If I've got, if I have a lot of big tractors and no little tractors, I'll, I'll try to seek out smaller tractors, but I do prefer when the trade-ins are sent to me and I can kind of cherry pick what I want. And so how this could relate to your business is really to, you should do this periodically anyways. How did you get to where you're at, right? There's going to be good decisions and bad decisions. And, and of course you want to remember those bad decisions so that you don't repeat them. But sometimes when a business loses focus as well, and it kind of goes off track and you don't know how you got there, you know, you got to simplify and get back to the basics. And for me, one of the reasons I wanted to get back into it is to diversify. Okay. And so that if attachments are slow on certain days, well, you know what, maybe there's a tractor that sells and kind of offsets all, you know, that, that income stream there or vice versa, right? If I'm selling a lot of tractors and all of a sudden that drops off, but folks are still buying attachments, it's just another income stream. You know, I, I mean, I got the affiliate uh, revenue stream as well. So, you know, you can use discount codes and you can buy products directly from vendors that I work with from manufacturers there and you save some money then I still get a commission off of advertising that uh, through that uh, that relationship as well and so that's another income stream as well and so that's just a good way to think about your business and it's for me as I grow my business and I have more and more employees that I am responsible for it weighs on my mind more on how I can prop up that bottom line with these different these different revenue streams that are coming in and so again if something's maybe we don't have a lot of shipments for attachments one day well guess what you guys can spend more time on the tractor side of thing dialing those in and getting them ready for sale and whatever else it is i just want there to be that security okay and so don't be afraid to change that's kind of what this all comes down to and man you got to be able to take risks and the longer you're in your business in your industry and it really comes with life experience I think the more, the more you're minimizing your risk, what you might've seen originally a long time ago when you first started out to be a huge risk because there's so much unknown. Now you've gone through different industry cycles, different seasons of the business and weathered more storms. And you now know if a risk is worth taking or not because you've been able to mitigate it and minimize the negative outcomes that could be associated with it and realize all the positives. And, and if it's still, if it's still too risky at that point, you just ignore it. You, you get rid of that, you take that out of the business fold. It's kind of, there's the 80-20 rule that, that is really applicable to just about every part of your life. And, and that could be the same thing with, you're gonna have 20% of your business that makes 80% of the revenue. The same kind of thing, right? Get rid of the stuff that, that just doesn't do it. And that's one of the reasons, <laughs> as much as I want to, I enjoy doing project work for folks. I enjoy doing the service work. Like if I'm gonna go out and, brush hog a field or till some gardens or whatever else. I really like doing that from a, a personal satisfaction viewpoint, but from a production per hour where I only have a limited finite amount of time and every day that was in the least profitable segment of my business. And so I don't do it anymore. And there's times and I think about, I maybe doing it again, just again, because it's a personal thing. I like to do it. But from a business aspect, if you put your, if you step outside the bubble and look at it from a business aspect, within my business, it doesn't make any sense. And you know what, if I look at this in a different season, right? Maybe, you know, my slowest season is typically that late winter to early spring, right? When snow season is winding down, spring sales haven't really started to pick up yet, but there's not a lot of service work that you can do at that point, right? But I'm just saying if there's a certain season, even within the calendar year, that would make sense for you to add on a service and, and prop up your low time or your slow time, then maybe that's something you look into, but don't be afraid to make those changes and don't be afraid to experiment. 
do something as a limited time scenario and kind of test it out, test the waters and see if it plays out or not. You, the worst thing you can do is never explore options, right? Stay the same, you're gonna get trounced by the competition. You know, I mean, when I first started out selling tractors, it's not that there weren't other folks doing it, but there weren't, they weren't visible at least, you know, and now I, I see tractors listed and I know all these little guys all around. I don't, I don't know them, but I, I can recognize their names and recognize their buildings that are behind there. These guys that are just out there flipping tractors, right? And that's become a lot more prevalent. So there's more competition there. It doesn't scare me off at all because I'm, I'm always looking to be better than them. I want to provide better value, better customer service, better bang for the buck all around. I just want to be the absolute best. And if you're setting your bar high, my goal is to always crush my competition and I'm never gonna stop wanting to do that. So hopefully this is encouraging for you if you're in business or if you wanna get into business, you know, we sprinkle these videos in. I, I enjoy talking about it and it's hard to get some, I'm not, I'm not selling any business products here, right? This is just a guy who's been doing it for a long time wanting to encourage you because that's kind of what a lot of folks want to do right they want to work for themselves they want to have their own business there's a lot of downsides to it as well right i mean i work there's never a day off let's just put it that way but there's a lot of good things too the independence the freedom the satisfaction that comes from building a business the right way and doing the right thing too so that gives you some insight as to why i'm back into selling tractors and that's a now thing right it doesn't necessarily mean it's a forever thing but it makes sense for now and i enjoy it I've always enjoyed it, and so you can find what we have for sale at GoodWorksTractors.com. And if you're in the market for a tractor, we do ship them all over the country. We ship, ship tractor attachments as well. We can put together a package for you. If you enjoyed what you see today, we'd love to have you tag along, hit that subscribe button. And I want to thank you for taking time out of your day. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.